Welcome everyone. Uh, Ward's uh, given me a couple of slides to present here, some sort of background to uh, why we're all here, I guess. Um, uh, you know, in, it's important to get deep sea data into into some sort of uh, consolidated system, and and but there's background to this, and so I'll just run through that. I also wonder, Ward, actually, whether we could have a list of participants, um, because there's a, you know, I'm I'm terrible at names. I know a lot of other people are as well, and it would just be good to have a list of people so we can, uh, you know, sort of reconfirm names and things. Okay, uh, Dosi. Um, and policy forums. Really what's happened over the years is that um, uh, in order to progress, I guess, marine conservation in the sea, we realise we need the need for data. And that, that's critical for a lot of processes, and I'll run through <coughs> some of these uh, now. But it's, uh, you know, it's crucial to get a consolidated database. And so in a, in a number of policy statements from different organisations, they are now calling for a consolidated database of deep water information that we can all access. This has a, a long history. It comes mostly out of the Census of Marine Life, uh, which was really the first organisation to focus on the deep sea and try and bring in all those global streams of data. I was a, a part of the SONSEAM, um, the uh, Global Sense of Marine Life on Seamounts, but many of you I know are on different uh, teams. You know, we looked at a lot of different habitats around the planet, um, from just general abyssal plains to the continental ridge systems, uh, the seamounts, uh, Chess looked at chemosynthetic systems, um, and I think that's probably all of them. Yep. And so, and then there was another project to try and bring all that data together. So it was really the first opportunity before then. I guess it was also part of the digitisation of museum collections that's been happening around the world for the last 20 years as well. It was sort of starting to bring together all those data sources into a consolidated system. And the Census of Marine Life took that quite far, um, but you know it stopped. It stopped when the Census of Marine Life stopped. And that's really the purpose of this workshop because uh, you know, with, there's a lot of data out there, there's a lot of data that's continued to be uh, collected, and yet it's not coming into the central uh, depositories. It, there's a, another background here too, in that the UN, the uh, Convention of Biological Diversity, is now looking at, at conservation implements in the high seas. So up to now, the high seas are regulated for mining through ISA, and also um, for fisheries under regional fisheries organisations, but there is no way currently to actually create, say, a, a marine park in the high seas that will be recognised by everyone. So uh, currently the UN, UNESCO, is, is trying to actually come up with a, a, a way of doing that. And again, there is a, a real need for data to drive this. You know, what would a marine park system in the high seas look like? You know, we need data sets in order to sort of start thinking about how these things would be implemented. Uh, what's all this about? Biodiversity baselines. That's true. I mean, there's a, um, you know, we all know there's climate change is happening. You know, the, the world is changing. It's important to actually document the a baseline. That's another reason. Getting historical stuff on is also equally important. So, you know, hopefully amongst the databases you bring to this, this session, um, you know, will be some historical stuff as well as some modern stuff, because it's important to get all that data so we can understand change in the, in the climate system as well. So the objectives is really to build on, on you know, what's been done before, um, is really to get a data flow from all your projects that you've been doing around the planet and flow them into, into one consolidated database, which will be OBIS. OBIS is recognised as the most important database by a number of organisations. It's now hosted by UNESCO. Uh, it's come out of... Uh, the Census of Marine Life is now hosted by UNESCO, and so it's here for the long term. It's a great database to put all your data in, and we're all going to learn exactly how to do that so, so data starts flowing for the deep sea. So this week's objectives. So we're going to learn all about um, uh, the various data mechanisms to getting data into OBIS. We're going to learn about each other's projects and, and, and data, and that's a really important thing to, as well, to network, to get deep sea scientists to talk to each other. We're going to look at uh, how OBIS sort of manages the data, how they validate it, how they um, ensure it's of the best quality. And we're going to learn how to access and process and visualise data on OBIS, and also having hands-on on, uh, sessions to prepare our own data for submission to OBIS and discuss a new deep sea node so that this work can continue into the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>